Here we are reviewing my 2011 Chevy Volt. The Volt is a plug-in hybrid manufactured by GM and available as the Holden Volt in Australia and New Zealand, a Vauxhall Ampera in the United Kingdom, and an Opel Ampera in the remainder of Europe. The Chevy Volt was first released as a concept vehicle in 2007 at the North American International Auto Show, although the production design model, which was unveiled in 2008, differed significantly from the original concept. The primary reason for the change in design from the concept car, which had more of a muscle car appearance, to the design model, was to reduce the concept's high drag coefficient to increase efficiency. The first generation Volt was produced from 2011 to 2015, with a new model introduced for 2016. As a plug-in hybrid, the 2011 Volt is capable of driving on all electric power for an estimated 35 miles, and switches to gas when the battery power is used up. In 2013, the electric range of the Volt was increased to 38 miles. When the battery is drained, a 1.4 liter four-cylinder gas engine with 80 horsepower engages to power a 55 kilowatt generator that powers the electric motors to the front wheels. In this mode, the vehicle drives as a hybrid with regenerative braking. The design avoids the expense of a larger and more expensive battery pack eliminates range anxiety concerns common with most electric cars which have a very limited range compared to a range of 380 miles for the Volt and address concerns with a lack of public charging infrastructure which was virtually non-existent at the time of development and which continues to be developed today. Regardless of your view regarding the benefits of an electric or gas vehicle I would argue there are several benefits to owning one. Many would suggest that electric cars are no cleaner than gas because much of our power in the US is generated with the use of coal. Many owners are installing solar PV systems on their homes to power their cars, and while I hope to do this at some point, like many others, I'm not in a financial position where I can afford that just yet. I do live in the Pacific Northwest, so, so a significant amount of our power comes from wind turbines and hydroelectric, which mitigates this. Many utilities also op offer the option to buy clean energy for just a few extra dollars each month. Also, most electric car owners power their cars at night when electric demand decreases significantly. Much of our power infrastructure, such as wind turbines, continue to run at full capacity day and night with no way to store that energy for later use. Charging a vehicle at night allows the capture of this energy for later use. Another significant benefit of electric cars is the opportunity to buy American energy and reduce our dependency on foreign oil. While America is one of the world's largest oil producers, we still meet only about 40% of our need with domestic oil, importing the rest from countries such as Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, and Nigeria. Using electric allows me to buy American power and reduce my dependency on foreign oil. Inside, the Volt has a very premium and modern look. When I was first looking at Volts, I thought it looked like it was trying too hard to be futuristic and made it look cheap. The, but the more I drive it, the more I realize it is actually very nice, with high quality materials and some unique touches. The primary console includes a summary of the total electric range on the left and gas range on the right. When the vehicle transitions from electric to gas, the car will minimize the battery, indicating electric charge, and the gas icon will expand and highlight. The left, lifetime gas mileage and trip gas mileage is also available in that display. The 2011 Volt comes standard with remote electric startup, Bluetooth, navigation, voice recognition, Bose speakers, a 30 gigabyte hard drive for audio data storage, and USB ports. This particular car is also fitted with 17 inch polished aluminum wheels, a rear view camera system, parking assist, leather wrapped steering wheel, and heated leather seats. The center console includes an overwhelming number of buttons on first glance, but it's actually rather intuitive and easy to use. The screen is touch sensitive, which also adds to the ease of use. To save energy, the Volt has a feature to automatically heat seats instead of blowing air through the HVAC system, as heating the vehicle cabin draws significant power, which can exceed what is needed to propel the vehicle on occasion. A power saving stereo cuts power usage by 50% and uses high grade magnets to decrease weight.
There are only two seats in the rear of the car because the battery pack is oriented front to back through the center of the car. Because of the orientation of the battery pack in the center of the car, there's actually a decent amount of cargo space in the back. With no seat in the middle, there's the ability to fit larger items through the center of the vehicle, which can be handy. Although a device like this one is helpful to prevent things from falling into the second row seats. So you can see here that we're actually out of electric power. So this gives you an idea of how it drives when it's in gas mode. If you look over at the energy monitor here showing you the power flow, you've got the engine that's feeding en energy to the generator right now. And so when I let off on the brake, you'll see that it then starts to regenerate that power from the, the, uh, from the brakes and from the engine feeding into the battery, charging that battery. And then when I push on the gas again, you see it go back, goes back to engine powering the generator and back to the energy monitor there. So as you slow down, you'll see the engine will go ahead and probably shut off here pretty quick. There we go, so the engine shut off. So now it's just feeding off the battery, feeding into that generator. And it will stay on that for a while. So it kind of powers up the battery for a little while with that engine, and then it'll shut off and it'll run off of battery again for a pretty decent amount of time, a lot more than a typical hybrid would. So there you can see the engine's back on again. The Volt handle is very nice. The steering's really firm, really feel that connection with the road. It's pretty good on corners. Um, as you can see, it's really quiet too. Right now the gas engine's running, so this is as loud as it gets. Um, really, it's just a little bit of a hum when the gas engine is running. When it's on the electric power, it's almost silence. Really nice. It's got a really firm feel to it, the suspension, everything. Kind of a sporty, um, but also kind of a high quality feel. It doesn't feel cheap like a lot of smaller compact cars of this size would. We'll go ahead and accelerate pretty good here, give you an idea of that. So one of the things really unusual about this car is when you accelerate, um, you don't really hear the car make any additional noise, even when the gas engine is on. It will just um, pull a little bit more power from that generator. It's a pretty unique feature about this car. And it's fairly quick. It, you know, if you look at the actual zero to 60 time on it, it's not fast. Um, and yet when you're driving it, it actually feels pretty sporty and pretty quick. Part of it is that you get that instant torque and the power is pretty linear. You don't really get the lurching that you do with a, a typical combustion engine or transmission because this is just a one speed transmission. It's just electric power to those front wheels.
The first generation Volt has won several awards, including the 2011 Motor Trend Car of the Year, 2011 Green Car of the Year, 2011 North American Car of the Year, 2011 World Green Car, and 2012 European Car of the Year. Owner satisfaction surveys on the Volt show exceptional consumer satisfaction, and while you may be thinking that's just because many of these, these drivers are previous Prius owners and anything would be better just off looks alone, the Volt is actually a great car compared to even many premium brands on the market. I've owned five Audis and a Jetta TDI, and I can say that this car drives every bit as nice as an Audi and is leagues ahead of the TDI in terms of the overall package when you consider features, quality build, and fuel economy. The 2011 Volt has a 16 kilowatt lithium ion battery pack that can be charged by plugging into a 120 or 240 volt residential outlet using the cord that is provided by GM. A charging station is not necessary. Charging in a standard 120 volt outlet takes 10 hours, while a 240 volt outlet cuts the time down to approximately four hours. During development, the Volt's battery packs were tested extensively, including use over 150,000 miles, exposure to extreme ambient conditions including a shaker table to simulate deteriorated road conditions, and in extreme cold and hot temperatures, ranging from negative 40 degrees to 47 degrees Celsius or 116 degrees Fahrenheit. Before purchasing my Volt, I did extensive research and found that the battery packs have been very reliable and most owners have seen very little change in battery range from when the cars were first produced. The Volt's battery is also guaranteed by General Motors for 8 years or 100,000 miles and covers all 161 battery components. GM estimates that the battery will degrade by 10 to 30 percent after 8 years or 100,000 miles. At 4 years old with 60,000 miles the range on my Volt is about 29 miles compared to the original 35 miles. The Volt requires premium unleaded fuel with a minimum 91 octane rating in order to utilize more ignition timing advance to maximize fuel economy compared to regular gasoline. The Volt has a pressurized gas tank that prevents fuel evaporation when the vehicle is driven for extended periods in electric only mode and to avoid maintenance issues from storing the same gasoline in the tank for months. The Volt has three operational modes, including normal, sport, and mountain mode. Mountain mode increases the minimum battery state of charge and increases power generation by the engine, maintaining performance on steep and long grades. Sport mode causes the engine to rev higher and increases response to the throttle pedal. The Volt has a top speed of 100 miles per hour and runs 0 to 60 in 9.2 seconds on the electric only and 9 seconds when the gas engine is assisting. When driving on gas only, the Volt is rated at 35 miles per gallon in the city and 40 miles per gallon on the highway. While these numbers in gas only mode are decent, the Volt is really best for short commutes in which the battery can be used. My Volt, for example, has a lifetime rating of over 250 miles per gallon, but when driving it from California to Oregon, on interstate and highway driving, I achieved just 35 miles per gallon, per gallon in gas-only mode. While I think the Volt is overall a nice looking car, and I think it is kind of a fun and unique look, I also admit is a, it is a bit odd, and Chevy has really improved on the design with the second generation model, which has a much cleaner and sportier appearance. Still, when you compare the Volt to its direct competitor, the Toyota Prius, it wins hand down with looks. It also wins hand down when comparing handling and comfort. The Volt received the highest possible five-star overall crash rating from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and was named a top safety pick by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. The Volt features an OnStar mobile app for owners to check vehicle information from their smartphone. It the app features allow the owner to monitor fuel efficiency, current electric range and charging info, lock and unlock doors, and it acts as a remote starter. A service plan is included with new vehicle purchase, while a subscription is required to maintain the service after the plan expiration. 
Here you can see the generator on the right and the 1.4 liter gas engine on the left. My only critiques of the Volt is that the appearance does take some getting used to, and it sits extremely low to the ground, which can result in catching the front fairing <clears throat> on speed bumps and driveways that are steeper angled. The price on these when first produced was also fairly high, with this one sitting at an MSRP of about 42000 on the original sticker. All of these issues have been corrected with the new Volt, which is very stylish, eliminates the issue with the front fairing, and has a starting price close to $30,000, before a $7,500 tax credit in the US. The new Volt also includes a longer range electric range. While I would be very interested in purchasing a new Volt, the first generation models are now coming down quite a bit in price as used models expand in the used market. Overall, I would highly recommend the Volt if you're looking for an efficient, comfortable, and sporty car. I can also say that it's liberating to drive on electric power and know that you're reducing your emissions and buying American energy instead of spending your money on foreign oil.